Hey there, I'm Leo from Boings and today we're going to take a look at progressive further interlaced video scanning. This video is related to the live video essentials we did on frame rates and dimensions, so I recommend you check that out first. In it we looked at common resolutions like 720p or 1080p, but you've probably also heard of resolutions like 480i or 1080i at some place or another. So what's the difference there? Well, the P in 1080p stands for progressive, while the I in 1080i stands for interlaced, and both are methods on how video is captured, transmitted, and displayed. So, let's take a look at the technical differences between those first. As you know, video consists of individual images played one after another. On traditional film, you had a long strip of images, each shown one by one. Progressive video works quite similar. Each frame is captured and shown as a whole image. In contrast, on interlaced video, each image is divided into even and odd lines, and the results are called fields. When interlacing these fields back together, it creates a whole image again. In video, this is done to save bandwidth, because every frame is just one field and only two frames together create a whole image again. While your eyes won't notice this trick, there are some disadvantages to it. Because every frame is just half an image, either with the odd or the even lines, the amount of information and therefore detail transmitted and shown is actually halved compared to the same clip in progressive scanning. Another problem is that between two frames the camera or subject already moved. So while half of the first frame is still visible, the changes to the second frame create visual artifacts called combing. This is definitely noticeable to the human eye, especially for fast movements like sports. While interlaced video is used and was actually invented for CRT TVs, progressive video is used on digital screens like your computer monitor, LCD TV, plasma TV and so on. So where in our digital age will you come across interlaced video then? Well, most TV set-top boxes will actually let you choose either between 720p or 1080i for their maximum output resolution. That's because the bandwidth for video over satellite or cable is not capable of delivering the full 1080p video signal, so 1080i was implemented to give a higher resolution option. Another example would be my Canon 700D which has an HDMI output. While the camera can capture 1080p without any problem to its SD card, the HDMI output will only deliver 1080i. That's to reduce the rendering load on the camera's processor. So how does interlaced video work then on your digital TV screen advertised for shiny 1080p? At some point in your setup, either your set-top box or TV converts interlaced video to progressive video, which is called deinterlacing. This process takes two half images and create a full one again. More advanced deinterlacing also reduces the combing effect we talked about earlier. For example, the deinterlacer in our live video production app MemoLive, which is found under effects. So in the end, what's better? Well, since you're mostly using digital standards for capturing, transmitting and viewing your video, even choosing a lower resolution format like 720p over 1080i will give you better quality and less artifacts. If you take a look at this graph on how many pixels per frame are theoretically transmitted, you can see that 720p only falls very short after 1080i without the artifacts or converting needed. This is also the reason for some TV channels like ESPN or Fox only broadcasting in 720p. That's it for today's video. I hope you got some valuable information out of it and if you still got questions or want to see more, head over to livevideoessentials.com. Thanks for your attention and see you again in the next video.